We're going to just take a little bit of a, uh, of a break here and just think about recapping some of what we've covered already in this series of videos uh, on, on the origin of life. Uh, let me again say the reasons for doing this because Dave Farina posted a video entitled Elucidating the Agenda of James Tour, a Defense of Abiogenesis. You can see in the description bo box below for the link. After watching that video, I was confused about almost every slide and statement that Dave Farina presented. I think every slide in his, in his talk was, was wrong. There were, and and uh, everything that he said in, that, in this talk were wrong, I think. There were numerous gross scientific inaccuracies and claims. Since others might be likewise confused, I'm going to use that video with timestamps as a launch point, and that's what I've done. And, and I think Dave's doing a great job uh, at, at, well, I don't know if he's doing a great job because I've never looked at any of his other videos, but I assume he's okay. But on this one, it was all wrong. So I, I appreciate his trying to teach the layperson about science, and that's great. Uh, and I have no contest with Dave. This is not something where I'm picking on Dave. I'm just trying to bring clarity to this field of origin of life. And uh, I really invite criticism on this, especially from my synthetic chemist colleagues. If I'm saying something wrong, you got to point this out to me. I'm sure I've twisted up little terms here and there, nucleotide versus nucleoside and things like this. You can point that out, but the things I really want pointed out are, are uh, if I have the chemistry wrong, if I've said something about chemistry that, that's wrong, point it out. Let me know. Uh, and if I'm right, you know, if, if I'm right on origin of life things, let me know. Uh, if you think that a synthetic chemist that, that uh, you're agreeing with me, let me know. Uh, we, we'll, 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 form a, we'll form a group. <laughs> uh, Remember, remember what happens. Just because a person speaks with, with uh, a lot of confidence, it doesn't mean that they really know it. Remember the Dunning-Kruger effect that we had discussed? That, that uh, this was uh, uh, something that was published by Dunning and Kruger. People can sometimes speak really confidently when they know next to nothing about a topic. And you think, wow, they, they, they speak so confidently, they must really know. Well, not necessarily. They don't necessarily know a whole lot of things. It's just that they haven't learned all the problems with what they're saying yet. And then at some point, as they get more knowledge, then their confidence level will go down because they say, wow, there's a lot more to it than I thought. And I, I really hope that, that those that, that, that thought along with what was on that video would, would come to this point. You know, uh, Kruger and Dunning put this, this here. I, I don't, uh, I cross this out because I, I don't think anybody here is stupid. Uh, that's not a question of stupidity. It's just a lack of knowledge. And, and I think that there's just a lack of knowledge that, that people presume with great confidence. They have very high confidence. But uh, uh, I think that, that uh, uh, people are, can come down in here and, and learn along with us. I'll continue to put out videos and you can see the, the publications that are there and hopefully people can come along and see what, what's known about origin of life and what's not known. I invite critique by synthetic chemists. What have I said in this lecture series that's inaccurate based upon the published literature? One cannot have a series of lectures and be correct on every point. I concede in some cases I will say or write silly misstatements or incorrect structures that can be pointed out. In other cases I might severely misinterpret and misrepresent the known data. That will be unintentional and I beg your forgiveness. I welcome your correction so that I can learn. If you can also share with me the scientific reference when correcting me, that would be most appreciated. So, so far, what we've covered is we've covered, uh, you know, reasons why I'm doing this video. I described what abiogenesis is, how that differs from evolution. Uh, we talked about the primordial soup and how, uh, uh, what's the layperson's understanding. The primordial soup is not something that's just pushed to sixth graders. Uh, there are people in high schools that are getting this, and I presume in colleges as well, because many adults are mixed up by this. And that's what we saw. What's the layperson's understanding? And uh, 
Uh, their understanding on this is very little, so they've, they've, uh, they've not got a whole lot of knowledge on this. Uh, there's a lot of hype from origin of life researchers themselves, and in their articles there's a lot of hype on this, and it's, it's, it's from the researchers themselves, not just from the press. Uh, the press is going to always ramp things up, but when we have a chance to, to review it and to check it, that's best, and we've got to keep these claims from going crazy. We first talked about homochirality. What does homochirality mean? Why is that an issue? We talked about what chirality means. We talked about carbohydrates, how they're made, and uh, the complexity of carbohydrates, the, the ability to store lots of information in carbohydrate just by the way that they're assembled. We talked about uh, uh, the building blocks of building blocks, how in Origin of Life, we don't just have trouble making the building blocks of life. We have trouble making the building blocks of the building blocks. Uh, we talked about peptides and how those are synthesized and how it's not trivial at all. Nucleotides and how that's not trivial. And then we're talking now in this intermediate summary, just summarizing where we've been. And uh, then we have just a few more topics to go in this series. So let me turn now from speaking about those who believe like was it in that video. I'm going to turn now to the talented Sutherland, Krishnamurthy, Devaraj, Pauner, Reichert, and other synthetic chemists. And I think that they would likely cringe to think that such gross misunderstandings as in the cited video are being promoted by some to explain life's origin. Such conjectures are not merely over-trivialized, they are consistently wrong, and it's misleading the layperson. It would be helpful if these kingpins in the origin of life community would bring some clarity to what is really known about the prebiotic chemistry as it relates to life's origin. Uh, and I'm speaking to my chemist colleagues, watch that video and tell me, is that what you want people to think is the state of the field of prebiotic systems, abiogenesis, do you really want them to continue to think that? That we're, we're on the verge of doing this. These are all trivial things to make. Do you really want them to think that? I doubt it. The, the public is misled on this. Let's bring some correction to this. When, when we, we speak to the press, let's recalibrate the press on this thing. You guys got to join me and speak up with me because there, there are, there are, there's, there's misleading things going on here. Maybe when we address the next, and, and we'll learn about this final class of compounds. We started with the hardest, which were carbohydrates because of all their stereogenic centers. And uh, uh, then, then we went to, to peptides. Then we went to nucleotides, which each one of them bears a, 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 a uh, five carbon sugar uh, on that, one of them deoxy, but again, there's, there's several stereocenters on that. And now we're gonna move into the, the, the lipids. Lipids are the simplest of the requirements, the four classes of prebiotic compounds needed for life. Lipids are the simplest. Maybe when we address lipids, origin of life researchers will have made those simplest of building blocks in their homochiral forms using prebiotic relevant chemistry. Maybe they will, maybe not. I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for joining us. If you want to subscribe, just click right here, subscribe, and we'll give you a shout out when the next video in this series comes out. Thank you.